Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine system, a system of equations with integer solutions. Now, if you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And before we get started, I just want to announce that you can now become a member of my channel. You can click the join button next to the subscribe button and become a member. You will get a shout out in my videos and there will be an exclusive icon next to your name in the live chat and comment section. And let's get started. Now we do have this Diophantin system x squared minus y squared minus z squared is equal to 1 and y plus z minus x is equal to 3. So we're looking for integer solutions and there is different ways to approach this problem but the, the method that I'm, I'll be using is going to be as follows. I'm going to go ahead and isolate y and z, leave it on one side, and then x on the other side. That's going to give me a system of equations, and we're going to look at that system of equations from a Diophantin and a quadratic perspective, or I should say Vieta perspective, and then we'll proceed with that. So that's the plan. Let's go ahead and do it. Now, from the first equation, I'd like to put y squared and z squared on the same side, and I want to make them positive. So let's go ahead and add that to both sides and bring the one over so that it looks like y squared plus z squared is equal to x squared minus 1. That's my first manipulation. And the second one, I'd like to isolate y plus z, so I'm just going to add x to both sides, and that's going to give me x plus 3. So now, we do have a system of equations in y and z, and I'm going to treat x as a constant for now for simplicity's sake, and we'll proceed. Now, because of the equations given here, one of them is a sum of squares, the other one is a sum, I'd like to go ahead and square the second one because y plus z quantity squared is gonna give me the first one and plus other things, right? So let's go ahead and do it. This should give me, if you expand it, y squared plus z squared plus 2yz, and obviously y plus z squared also means x plus 3 squared because they are equal, right? And now what we get from here is that we know that x uh, y squared plus z squared is equal to this. So I can just go ahead and substitute that into my equation. y squared plus z squared is equal to x squared minus 1 plus 2yz gives me x plus 3 quantity squared. Now, what am I going to do from here? Well, I'd like to put all the x's on one side and get yz by itself. And then we'll work with that. We'll uh, use the y plus z as well, and we'll make a really nice system. So let's go ahead and subtract the x squared minus 1 from both sides. In other words, I'd like to subtract x squared and add 1. And when you expand this, this should be x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus x squared plus 1, and it's equal to 2yz. x squared cancels out, which is nice. And we get 2yz is equal to 6x plus 10. If you divide both sides by 2, you should be getting yz is equal to 3x plus 5. So we got yz and we have y plus z. So I'm going to put those together and then try uh, start working it out. And as I said earlier, we're going to use a Vieta approach here, which, which you, you should hopefully remember from a previous video because we did a v video on Vieta's formulas. And I told you that those formulas are super important, especially when you're dealing with polynomial equations. They're very helpful. Now, we do have a system of equations in Y and Z. And if you ignore the fact that X is a variable and treat it as a constant, you're basically looking at a quadratic system here, right? How do you turn it into something nice? Well, there is, again, different ways to go about it, but I'd like to use the Vieta approach here. What is the Vieta approach? Well, if you know an equation or if you have the coefficients of an equation and you know that the root, it has roots, you can write a sum, you can write a product and so many other relationships between uh, the roots. So there's relationships between the roots and the coefficients. In this case, we're kind of reversing the process. We have the sum and the product of the roots and we're going to write the equation. So we're basically writing an equation. And let me use the u as a variable whose roots are y and z. So the sum goes here with the negative sign, remember, because the, the sum of the roots is negative b over a. So to make up for that. And then plus the constant term is going to make up the yz, which is 3x plus 5. So we got an equation whose roots are y and z. By the way, y plus z 
uh, I guess I probably skipped a step and kind of combined two things here. I, I meant to write this way. Okay, here we go. So this is the equation whose roots are y and z, right? u is just another variable, so you don't want to get confused. You could also use z here, but let's, or y, but it's better to use a third variable. Anyways, so now in this equation, we know that y plus z is equal to x plus 3. So let's go ahead and make those replacements. y plus z replace with x plus 3, and then yz replace with 3x plus 5. So now, this is your equation in u, a quadratic, whose roots are y and z. So we do know the solution is y and z here. Okay, now let's go ahead and solve it because we know the solutions. If we solve it, we're going to get something nice from here. How do you solve it? Well, uh, we could use the quadratic formula. So u is going to equal negative b x plus 3 plus minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be x plus 3 quantity squared minus 4ac, a is equal to 1. So we should be getting the following all over 2a, which is 2 because a is, a is equal to 1. Now, let's simplify this a little bit more. So it looks better. x plus 3 quantity squared is going to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. And if you distribute to negative 4, you're going to get negative 12x minus 20. So th that expression is going to simplify under the radical. And we should be getting something like x squared minus 6x minus 11. That's basically our discriminant, right? What does the discriminant tell us? Well, it's going to tell us a lot of good things. First of all, notice that u is either y or z because there's a plus minus sign. So one of them is y, the other one is z, and they'll switch around. Okay, good. What else do we know? Well, we know that y and z are integers, x is an integer too. Therefore, this expression under the radical or the discriminant needs to be a perfect square. Otherwise, you're gonna get an irrational solution, which is not an integer, right? Therefore, this is what we can conclude from here. The discriminant, delta, whatever you wanna call that, okay? is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 11, the expression under the radical. And this needs to be a perfect square. So what am I going to set it equal to? Well, some perfect square. doesn't really matter, right? What variable we didn't use? We, we didn't use a z. Did we use a z? Okay, yeah, we did use x, y, z. So let's use a w. How about that? Okay, fine. So suppose this is going to be w squared because w squared is a perfect square, right? If w is an integer. Cool. What about this? Like, what, what is big deal about this, right? Well, Here's the thing. You know that x is an integer, w is an integer, and we do have another Diophantine equation. Oh man, a Diophantine equation within a Diophantine system. But this one is easy to solve. Why? Because the left-hand side can be turned, and we've done a similar problem in our video on Diophantine equations, if you remember. I can't remember what it was. It Was it number four or number five? But yes, one of the problems required something like this. Anyways, so, I can write this as x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 20. And remember, that comes from here, the perfect square, but we kind of manipulate a little bit. Uh, this is equal to w squared. Okay, what's the big deal about this? This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. So you see what I'm getting at? We're going to get the difference of two squares. So we should be getting the following. x minus 3 squared minus w squared is equal to 20. Isn't this awesome? because it's factorable. And we're looking for integer solutions. Beautiful. Let's proceed. Okay, how am I going to proceed? Well, we're going to factor this first, x minus 3 plus w, multiply by x minus 3 minus w. And again, these are integers. So you got to factor 20. Okay. And it didn't say positive or negative, so we're going to be considering basically everything. But one thing to keep in mind, for example, if the first one is 20 and the second one is 1, let me just show you one of them so that you get the idea. So let's try to solve this as a system, right? Because we have two variables, we should be able to solve this. Okay. So suppose the first one is 20, the second one is 1. What would you do to solve this, right? I mean, you would either add or subtract. Let's go ahead and add them. When we add them, w is going to cancel out. If you subtract, x is going to cancel out. Same thing. So you should be getting 2x minus 6 is equal to 21. 2x is equal to 27. Uh-oh. x is not going to be an integer. Problem. Houston, we have a problem. So how do you eliminate that? Well, here's what it means. If the factors add up to an odd number, then we don't have an integer solution. So just discard those. 20 and 1 is not going to work. As well as negative 20 and negative 1. Same thing, right? So if, if one particular solution doesn't work, its opposite is not going to work either. So we have to look for pairs of numbers uh, whose sum is even. 
So can I do 10 and 2? Absolutely. Can I do negative 10 and negative 2? Absolutely. So those are all good choices, right? Okay, cool. But if you use 5 and 4, for example, it's not going to work. 4 and 5, all those combinations, unfortunately, is not going to work. And this is pretty much what we have. There's nothing left. So the only case we're going to look at is the 10 and the 2 case. But of course, we're going to switch that around with um, different combinations. Okay. Or permutation. Whatever you want to call that. X minus 3 plus W. Let me start with this one. So 10. And this is going to be a 2. Right? Okay. Now, notice that when you get the 10 and the 2, how do you find the answer? Right? You add these up. And then divide by 2, that actually gives you x minus 3s, and then you add. So in other words, I can quickly get the answer like this. Look, I add these up, I get 2 times x minus 3, which is 12. And then I divide both sides by 2, which is x minus 3 is equal to 6. And then I just add 3 to the half of the number, and that gives me the x value, which is x equals 9. And of course, if x equals 9, I can go ahead and find the other variables as well. Okay, so this is one of the solutions. How do you find the other solution? So the shortcut is basically add these numbers up, divide by 2, and then add 3. So if you do it with negative 10 and negative 2, you would be adding these numbers up, okay? And then you would divide by 2, which would give you negative 6. When you add the 3, you should be getting negative 3, right? Now, when you do it with the negative 2 and negative 10, like switch them around, it wouldn't matter because you would still get the same value for x. When you substitute, you should be getting the same values for y and z. So we very basically have like two x values here, 9 and negative 3. So let's go ahead and see how we can find the other values from here. Well, we said that we built an equation whose solutions are y and z. And we basically have this, right? So we do have this equation right here, which I could probably just go ahead and you know, use, correct? So let me go ahead and take that equation right here and let's go ahead and move that over here so we can use it, right? So let me go ahead and bring that over here and now we can use it with the particular x values. Awesome. Now, if x equals 9, what happens? If x equals 9, if x is equal to 9, of course, this is not the pen, right? That's why it's not writing. x is equal to 9. Then I should be getting something like u squared minus 12u, okay? Actually, we don't even need that. We could, well, whatever. We can just solve it, right? x equals 9 is going to give me 27 plus 32. And that's equal to 0. And let me tell you something. Since the solutions are integers, we should be able to factor this, right? Okay, do you see? 4 and 8, negative 4 and negative 8. From here, you will be 4 or 8. But remember, u represents y and z. So this means that u is equal to 4 or 8. Basically, that means that for x equals 9, I can have 4 and 8 or 8 and 4. So these are my order triples for x equals 9. What about x equals negative 3? Let's go ahead and explore that. If x is equal to negative 3, then my equation is going to look like u squared... And negative 3 plus 3 is going to be 0, obviously, right? So the u term is going to cancel out. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 5 is equal to negative 4. So you should be getting u squared minus 4 is equal to 0, which means that u is equal to 2 or u is equal to negative 2. And these are y and z values. So another order triple that we get is going to be negative 3, comma, 2, comma, negative 2, or negative 3, comma, negative 2, comma, 2. So basically, these are going to be my solutions. I have four different solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And consider becoming a member. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, take care, be safe, and bye-bye.